Hey everyone, Jacob Tifa with Alpha Omega Rocketry. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a little bit more in depth of our thrust vector control uh, mount and some of the inner workings of it. But no further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Okay, everyone, uh, I think the burning question for anyone that is not familiar with rockets is, what is a thrust vector, what is thrust vector control? Simply, thrust vector control is the action of angling the thrust of a rocket. Uh, for anyone not, in, uh, not familiar with vectors, or you've not taken a uh, recent physics course, a vector is motion in a direction with a certain magnitude. Uh, Many times they're depicted as an arrow. Uh, the arrow has, oh, it's, it's, it's a certain length and it's pointing uh, at a certain heading. For example, uh, something that all of us can apply, uh, imagine you're in the middle of a cornfield in the middle of Indiana, and you get a very strong gust of wind. Uh, let's say the, that gust is 20 miles per hour and it came from the west. Uh, the vector would be 20 miles an hour going from the west to the east. And there you go, you have a vector. Uh, similarly, uh, in our thrust vector control mount, uh, let's say, here, here's one of our mounts, uh, let's say we have thrust going down in the rocket. As we angle uh, the thrust, we are changing the vector or changing the direction. And by doing this, we are ultimately controlling uh, the direction of our rocket. Uh, how we plan to do, do this is using our thrust vector control mount. And I actually have a video showing how we got our uh, sensors to move the mount using servos and our servo rods. So uh, why don't we view that video right now. Okay, so uh, with that video, you may be asking, what controls uh, this? How how does the how does it turn those uh, signals from the or those data points from the sensors into different uh, commands for the servos? And uh, that is simply uh, this. It, it's a method that many uh, rocket geeks use, and it is PID. PID stands for proportional integral and derivative. Uh, proportional are actions or things happening in the instantaneous moment. Things are happening in the present. Uh, integral is the collection of things that have happened in the past, and the derivative is really predicting the future. All these are actually not collecting data points, but are not collecting hardcore data like uh, acceleration data or gyroscope data, it uses those indeed, but uh, what it is calculating is the error from a predetermined set point. For example, that'd be something like 90 degrees uh, or straight up for a rocket. Uh, to break it down, PID is simply an algorithm that uh, is smoothing constantly changing variables from the wind or slightly pitching over due to a misplaced uh, uh, or offset weight in a rocket, things like that. This is one of the complicated uh, PID equations. Uh, as you can see here, we have our P uh, value, our I variable, and our D variable throughout this. And there are many different uh, formulas for this, but this is just one I found uh, quickly, and there, there are many others. Thankfully, that headache of a uh, equation can be broken down by reason uh, and somewhat simple. Uh, 
Now, before we jump into it, I did want to say uh, I am not uh, an expert on this at all. Um, really, this is something I've just recently learned. I'm learning more. In fact, I did want to thank Joe Barnard and BPS.Space for recommending the book Control System Design. It has been very helpful uh, in learning, and I'm only one chapter in. And uh, that's, a, that's like a tiny little bit of the book. So I'm very excited about that, especially since it's what I ultimately want to do, being an engineer. Okay, but it, um, all that is just to say, if there is something that you see that is wrong in this video uh, about PID, drop that in the comment down below. I want to know where I'm wrong, and I want my viewers to know if I'm wrong as well. I do not want to lead anyone astray. Okay, so let's get into it. We already defined uh, what P, I, and D is, so, uh, and we're just going to, uh, as you can see up here, I'm, my camera might be blocking it, we're going to say K, P, K, I, and K, D, like the equation put them. Okay, so we have here, we have our set point. Uh, then we have our control. That is our P, I, and D variables, but we'll go into that a little bit more in a second. Next is our actuating signal. So it's actually taking the data points. It is calculating through the control and creating an actuating signal, something that is controlling something. In this circumstance, a uh, technical term for it is the plant, but it's actually um, our servo in this, in this is instant. And what that is creating is it's creating a controlled variable. That controlled variable will then, um, once it runs once it runs through the KI, uh, P, I, and D, uh, will be fed back uh, in the feedback loop to the set point and be, uh, oh, it, it will be compared. Uh, so let's say if that error is 85, uh, if the controlled variable after it's gone through the servo and everything is 85 degrees, then, and that is compared to 90 degrees, we have a five degree error, and that's what P, I, and D is constantly calculating. That is, uh, using that data, they are calculating how far off from the set point are we. And by doing that, uh, and looping it constantly, uh, it hope, we hope to uh, narrow in, so like if it's 85 degrees, and then it kind of narrows in, and it goes past a little bit, because it never hits truly 90 degrees. So it may go past a little bit, and then back for back and forth, but hopefully get closer and closer to 90 degrees throughout the entire flight. I mean, there there are multiple variables. There's wind changes. There's uh, offset balance and just uh, imperfections in the engine. Uh, you, the list goes on. But that is PID for uh, that is extremely broken down and simple. Uh, in fact, if you'd like to learn more about PID, uh, you can take a look at the videos, which I'll include at the end of this. It's by MATLAB, uh, and is incredibly helpful. Seven uh, length, seven series, uh, seven different videos in a series that explain PID uh, in great detail. But uh, this is the main core of our code. If it wasn't for PID, we can, or control theory, we could not uh, thrust vector this rocket. Uh, it would it would simply topple over and go spiraling out of control because we have no control system. We don't have any fins on it, nothing like that. Uh, and ultimately, the preferred flight is 90 degrees. That's what we want our rocket to do. We want it to go straight up, and uh, we go, yay! But hopefully we'll get to that point. Uh, I did want to, uh, uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Alpha Omega Rocketry, you can click the link in the description or go to alphaomegarocketry.space. There you can learn about our different projects, our launch pad, con uh, our launch pad construction, uh, our, uh, our uh, Zeta flight computers, our thrust vector control project, and also check in on our past videos. Uh, also, Subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us through this journey of thrust vectoring, and click that bell so you don't miss any uh, new releases of videos. Uh, also, uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And lastly, 
support us on Patreon. Uh, making rockets is not cheap, and uh, we could really use your help. Uh, but I want to thank you all again for tuning in. May we explore the universe from beginning to end, or from alpha to omega. I want you all have a nice day.